Hi everyone, welcome to the second module or chapter two for Information Systems Resource Management. Uh, today we're going to be focusing on the role of the Chief Information Officer in IS Management and what they are concerned with, what they need to do to make an efficient and more productive IT organization and work with the business. So the responsibilities of the head of the IS function go from um, f go far beyond operating the efficient programming shop as it used to be in the 80s. It used to be that you had a person who ran IT and they kind of knew about development and applications. They probably came up from the computer science ranks and basically dictated how development was going to occur. Uh, that's no longer the case. Now we're actually seeing a majority of the CIOs, over 50%, actually come from a business function. So they may actually be marketing people who understand about technology as opposed to technologists who come up the ranks. So. Basically, that's what we're going to be focused on. What are the skill sets that a chief information officer needs, and what are they focused on? In the early days, it was really about just get things to work. Buy the servers or get the PCs coordinated. It was more of a logistics thing and an operations thing. Eventually, it, it evolved into managing resources, information. How do we effectively use the equipment that we have, and how do we use the data that we have, and how do we get it to the appropriate places that it has to get to? That's really what the IS role has become. It supports decision making, and that's why the IT uh, executive has actually moved up the ranks and has a seat at the director's table, because they get the information where it's needed, and they listen to the arguments of who needs various information systems, and where the priority needs to be and how they can allocate the budget. So IT basically spans all of the different functions from finance, marketing, legal, human resources, uh, and everything else within that organization, logistics as well. Uh, the responsibilities go way beyond this programming shop thing. And they're, they're literally seated at the table and they are, they are peers to the chief marketing officer, the chief uh, financial officer, or uh, chief operating officer. And in some cases, the chief information officer actually is the key person uh, for, for the other departments to roll up into. It's not uncommon to actually have the marketing function actually report into the information technology function or the IS function because they may be highly intertwined. It depends on the organization. So really the direction for IT is, is, has been uh, looked at in terms of these waves, right? How they define IT as being used by industry in terms of five key waves of innovation. And basically innovation means we're going to deliver value constantly. And so you have these above the line and below the line waves. The first very basic rudimentary type of wave is reducing cost. Then we can leverage the investments in infrastructure and applications. Those are all cost-based and reducing cost type of directions. After that, in the higher levels, we start moving into value-added services where we enhance our existing products and services. We develop information type of databases and portals that will enhance decision making. And in, a, in the highest one, we're actually looking at reaching our customers more efficiently or reaching our, even our suppliers more efficiently to increase the, to increase the supply chain. So here's a nice diagram of how the charts actually work. Uh, how the waves actually work. The below the line items are to save money, above the lines make money and keep us in business from a functional perspective. And every time we go through this, we may start at reducing costs, but there's only so much that you can do at each one of these waves before you move into the next one and say, this is where our next set of opportunities are. And that's what the CIO has to really focus on. How do I get the best value from my IT investments, my, my people, the new technologies staying on top of the trends. And you can think of it in terms of these waves of innovation. Wave one in reducing costs it was really all about the 60s. It was systems were new. We had to manage these monolithic systems, these programming entities. People were highly specialized. So how do we reduce the costs associated with bringing those people in? After we've had them in, in the 70s, we started looking at leveraging investments. So the IT literature and even the, the practice um, magazines all focused on these things in the 60s and then the 70s. You know, you'll hear the term ROI. We've heard the term ROI in other areas. Well, in the 70s for IT, that was the big area. How do you have a return on investment for acquiring a new system like a mainframe or uh, developing a system? How do you calculate that? 
as we get into the 80s and 90s, we start enhancing products and services and, and decision making. So you see decision support systems coming into play where we can actually use systems to help us make better decisions. We see this in the logistics area and ultimately we see it in the healthcare arena as well as in financial. And we can see with the internet and social media that we're actually moving even beyond that to reach customers in a different way. So management has to be involved in guiding IT once you cross the line. It cannot be just the techies. Techies can basically help save costs, but what they cannot do is they, if you're a pure techie, you can't really know how to reach the customer because that's really a marketing function. So as you move up the waves, or e each of these waves, you're going to require a different skill set. So it's not uncommon to see people who are more business oriented hop into that head of IT role because that's where the company needs to be. The traditional functions of IT really no longer uh, a hold. You know, it is a, an essential piece of the business strategy. It's not about servers. It's not just about programming. It's about getting the right resources and the application of the resources strategically. It, keeping, not keeping up in IT may even mean going out of business. I mean, if you didn't keep up with IT and you didn't put uh, patches and get the new software, your company might not exist. Think of it if um, a retailer was still just using simple cash registers or simple point of sale systems that were basically archaic or couldn't develop a website, you wouldn't be in business. The job itself of running IT has really become too large uh, for just one group or, or one individual. IT spans all of these areas. It is also not uncommon to see IT as either the largest or second largest group within an organization. Um, so. With the growing importance of IT, it's causing IS departments work to expand into new areas of responsibility. Management is realizing that the traditional, more operational portions of the job don't have to be performed by the IS department. And it is those things that we'll talk about that are commodity items. And you can outsource those things to other players because it doesn't give you a competitive advantage. Maintaining a server can be done by an in-house staff or it can be done by an outsource staff just as easily. In some cases, it might even be better done with an outside staff. So this is another chart of the traditional responsibility and the erosions of, of where things have been going. Managed remote systems moves out somewhere to outsources. Systems analysis might actually be decentralized or federated to the different departments like finance. You may have particular business analysts that are spe specialized in finance and they reside in the finance department. And system building, you might not want to do that internally. You might actually give that to outsourcers, or you might just say, we're not going to build anything. We want to use the best off-the-shelf applications available. 